Back on BTN Live, I'm Michelle McMahon. For Black History Month, we traveled to Elkhart, Indiana to sit down with three members of a family who can boast four decades of Big Ten student athletes, all from the same hometown. In this revealing conversation, learn about their most memorable moments and the indelible Big Ten legacy of Coley Webb, Garvin, and Rob Robertson, and Damon Bethea. We're sitting here, all right, family. My great uncle, y'all uncle, Coley Webb is not here. Um, Coley Webb, he was at Nebraska in the 60s. You were at the University of Illinois in the 70s. Unc, you were in at Northwestern, um, you know, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, myself at Michigan State in the 90s. What did it mean to you about the legacy of what our family has been able to do in Big Ten athletics? It means a lot. I call him Uncle Coley, Coley Webb. Uh, and he was really the first of us, really us four, all playing basketball here in this magnificent gym, the Northside Gym in Elkhart, Indiana. And he went on to the University of Nebraska. Right now, we all know that Nebraska is part of the Big Ten now. But he was at Nebraska, like I think, from 62 to 66. And I really think he kind of like established the college mentality outside of uh, my mom and my aunties and grandparents about going to college, being a minority here in the United States, of getting your college degree that will help you prepare for living in the United States of America as a good citizen. And I think that's the way the Big Ten affected me in, in, in the early 70s. You know, for me, it was a situation that was uh, beyond what I could imagine, but uh, it followed suit. Mm -hmm. for uh, for Garvin at Illinois for me to be at Northwestern. So uh, as you're going through it, you don't think about a legacy, but now that we get a chance to really think about it mm -hmm. and what we leave for our kids and what we leave for their kids mm -hmm. is a sense of uh, not just family tradition, but a, a, a sense of standards. You see a lot of people who are your know, families that have one or two Big Ten athletes in them. But sometimes that athlete may, you know, the dad may start or the mom may start out in Houston, Texas, and then they may, the kid may come out of Ohio to go mm -hmm. to a Big Ten school. Mm -hmm. Well, we were very fortunate that we're all homegrown, so to speak, to come through the whole school system, to, to be part of, you know, not only build the legacy at Elkhart, then we go on and build the legacy uh, in the Big Ten. It's been uh, spectacular. It was really huge for me in regards to why I chose University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, it was in 1970 that I signed a, uh, a scholarship to the University of Illinois. And it was all because I had a black assistant coach sit down and tell me on a recruit trip, and it happened to be J.C. Caroline, who just passed. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, I will guarantee that you had an opportunity to play football here at the University of Illinois. And to me at the time, especially after Elkhart going through a whole lot of racial issues in the late 60s. That's all I wanted, Dame. That's all I wanted was opportunity. That word was, was huge, being a black American in the United States at the time. Just give me the opportunity and let everything else fall on my shoulders. And I still believe that in the late 60s or early 70s, that that maybe the Big Ten con conference was ahead of a whole lot of other conferences yeah. when it came to giving black athletes the opportunity mm -hmm. to participate at the varsity level. There was African Americans that were in certain positions that helped recruit. Right. Doc Glass was the recruiter up at Northwestern. He was just that, that, uh, that real advocate for Northwestern that was African American and that really treated and could talk to me as an African American in a way in which it made me feel comfortable. Quite frankly, I wanted to make sure that people knew who I was. Mm -hmm. And I fought uh, on the court to make sure that I was gaining respect as I played. And I use that today. We got to fight for an opportunity to make sure that we're not just respected, but uh, that we are heard and, um, and, and the impact that we're making is seen. Let's talk about, you know, some of your big time days um, at the University of Illinois, some of your big time games, some of your big moments that still stick out in your mind. 
I used to get really upset when I played IU, Indiana University, and Purdue. So those two games, I would have a tendency to maybe have five or six catches and one or two touchdowns, you know. And, and I, only, I only scored ten touchdowns, so you know the majority of those ten was probably against either IU or Purdue. It's amazing. All of us got our degrees. And to me, that is more exciting than anything else coming through the Big Ten and about us three and about Uncle Coley. He even got his degree from Nebraska. You know, we got our degrees in a reasonable time. I'm talking about, what, four to five years? Yeah. Which, yeah. Yes, I'm bragging. I, I have a right to brag, <laughs> I guess, after 50 years. Why not? And all of us is from Elkhart sitting in this gym. To me, I think that was one of the two or three big accomplishments that I had coming through the Big Ten. <laughs> Are you, are you going are you going to tell the public about that big win you had against uh Michigan State? Well, I wanted Dame to talk about that. I oh, figured, yeah, I figured, why not? I figured, I figured, I figured, I figured, I figured that he would feel hey, I feel more no comfortable. Need, no, no need to be pumping that up here too quickly, okay? <laughs> I feel so, like he could feel, you know, I wanted him to you're feel right, that. You're right, you're right. He right, need right. to feel yeah, that. Let him feel that. Let him feel that. That's you part know, of his history, right? Know, that's part of his history, okay. exactly. They were talking Sorry. about all the, you know. I'm a little bitter at you, but I'm also happy, too, because it's your fault that we won the national championship, so I can live with that. <laughs> so I want you to take, and this is painful to talk about this game, but tell everybody about that game and uh, about how it was the greatest win for Northwestern. Yeah, it, you know, obviously it was, a, it was a signature win for from for the years that I was at Northwestern, uh, just because of the and, and because of the significance of Michigan State. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's because of what Michigan State was and did. You know, the great ones did things a little bit differently. You know, they would show you that they were great. Magic was one of them. But Coach Falk, Coach Rich Falk, drew up a game plan to, uh, to, to go against uh, Michigan State that I thought we executed well, no matter how well or how bad they played. So Coach said, make sure that you touched them and, uh, so that they couldn't get the alley-oops. So we took the alley-oops away. Uh, and we played a, a very strong zone outside of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and their outside shot fell, uh, fell by the wayside, and it allowed us to stay close. Um, I had a pretty good game. I grabbed uh, some, some rebounds, and I think I led the team in scoring. If I, if I remember that correctly, I don't know how many points I had, but I scored at critical times. You had over uh, 20. You had over 20. Yeah, I had a, I had a pretty good game. But uh, you can tell. Uh, that um, they probably were looking beyond us because, you know, we didn't have uh, the best record. And, you know, and sometimes you look at, when you look ahead in the Big Ten, you get smacked. Oh, yeah. So we were a wake-up call uh, for, for, for Judd, Magic, and the crew. And that wake-up call uh, sent them through all the way to, to, to meet Larry Bird in the uh, championship game of, uh, of, the, uh, of the NCAA. See, I was very fortunate to go to Michigan State and play for two Hall of Fame coaches That's on the true. staff at the same time. I mean, obviously, Coach he coach just passed away, and he, he meant a lot to me, and, uh, and then Coach Izzo as well. Everybody likes to ask me, what's the difference between Coach Heathcote and Coach Izzo? Well, <laughs> Coach Heathcote was always intense. He was a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Coach Izzo is different. He's like, he wants you to outwork the next man. Obviously, I played on his first team ever, and that's a special thing to me. I played on the last team of a Hall of Fame mm -hmm. coach, and I played on the first team. I got the Hall of Fame coach, helped get the Hall of Fame coach some wins on his way out. I tell Coach Izzo I got him started, and he did the rest, which really ain't the truth, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so my last question is a question that each one of us has to answer. Who is the best Big Ten athlete in the family? Me. Okay, here's his answer. Uncle Rod, what's your answer? I think uh, a, a player that, that literally played um, 104 out of 104 games in his career started 103 out of those 104. You either that good or that, or your team was that he bad. Put, he hadn't put a name to it yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, what are you talking about? about? Um, you know, uh, uh, leading scorer and guard in the Big Ten my senior year and uh, leading rebounding guard in the Big Ten my senior Do we have year. a commercial coming up or what? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about? I'm talking about me. Me? me? Who is me? Like, it's not you. It's okay. me. Okay. <laughs> well, I respect both of y'all's games and Uncle CW's games, too. Okay.
but I feel like I won a lot. That's all I used to care about. I was a role player, I guess. You know what? I, I, I was a glue guy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. I can score on nights. Did, Some nights did, I score, but hey, I, did, I was did, a defender too. Coach Izzo give you that day, glue guy. You, no, you, you Coach Izzo like know, know, that Coach Izzo know what time like it is. Board. That's he, like a whiteboard statement. When, he, he when they say DB, he, he know what time it is. <laughs> um, you know, I said that question, but I, I think that it's a package deal. I think that for everything that our family has done in the Big Ten, we're here as a legacy, as a package deal. We ain't here individually, you know? But I said that because I laugh because that's one of our questions that we do we at always, Christmas time amongst ourselves. That, you know? That's one that will never be settled. That's it one that will never be settled. Be settled. <laughs> and you know what? We got more on the way. Absolutely. Well, family is family. Right. And so it's important that, um, uh, that we do have, you know, this to leave for mm -hmm. uh, our kids. And uh, we hope that, you know, we have some more Big Ten players coming behind us. I always want to thank the Big Ten because I'm... I'm very proud of being a part of the, of the Big Ten Conference. And I'm talking 45, 50 years ago. And I'm still proud of being involved with that. And, and proud of where we came from. Yeah. You know, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with it. Elkhart. 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 Elkh